Hey guys, Nukem here, and I'm bringing back a series that I started last year when I first started this finance channel, is five stocks I'm looking to buy in 2021, and this is for the month of February. Now, a lot of these companies are growth companies, so they're going to do well in the long term. I'm a long-term investor, so I look at it in the long term, and whenever there's a dip, I'm gonna keep buying more and average into the positions. Now, some of these companies I don't have in my portfolio yet, but I'm thinking to add it to my portfolio in the future, or I'm just currently looking at it. And some of these companies I already have in my portfolio, and I would love to just keep buying more so it keeps blowing up my portfolio. Now, keep in mind, do your own due diligence. You know, don't buy what I suggest. These are just companies that I like and I see huge growth potentials. And keep in mind, a lot of these companies are trading near all time highs or at all time highs. And when I mentioned some of these companies last year, people in the comment sections like, you're crazy. They're trading at all times high. It's already grown and blew up so much. And since then, the stock already doubled or tripled times in value since I made those videos and people missed out on a lot of growth. And that's what growth companies are. You are buying at a premium thinking it's going to expand and return those investments to you in the future. So that's why you always are trading at a premium, kind of like Tesla and EV stocks that you're overpaying right now but in the long term it's pretty cheap if it does very well so those are all the ways the risk of growth stocks so before we get started i appreciate all right before we get started i appreciate you guys smashing that like button and hitting that like and sharing to your friends thank you for subscribing and hitting notification bells and i tell all my members in my youtube channel of all my trades of things i'm buying so if you're interested to see my $500,000 stock portfolio. Uh, feel free to join the members just for $2 a month. Pretty cheap, six cents a day. Okay, so let's go with the first one on the list today and it is Wayfair. Yes, Wayfair uh, is a furniture company but it's been doing very well in the e-commerce business ever since the pandemic hit. The stock has been blowing up through the roof and I'm gonna tell you why I think Wayfair still has a lot of room to grow even though it's blown up. I don't own any position in this company quite yet but it's something that I'm definitely looking into and possibly buying. And I'll tell you guys what a good entry point I'm personally thinking to buy into. So let's take a look at the stock first before I tell you about this growth story. So Wayfair is currently trading close to $300 in less than a year, remember the bottom of the market around March 23rd, March 20th, that's when the very bottom of the market happened, um, that big red day. Well, it was $23 a share, less than a year ago. At $23 a share, it's trading close to $300 today. That's a massive return if you bought at the very bottom. That's probably one of the best return on investment you can probably have in your life of just that, that very bottom at $23, now it's at $300. Oh my goodness, look at that growth. Now, it ran up a lot, but if you actually look at the dips uh, for the past year, the highest it went was 340, and then it dipped in September to 360, and then just hovering around and back in December went below 230. So the stock is still trading high, it's still rich in my opinion, but if it gets below three, uh, 250, below 250 range, that might be a good entry point for me personally speaking. Now let's talk about what this growth story is about. Well, Wayfair is a furniture company and usually it's geared towards the middle and upper class where they like to buy this furniture. It has that little modern trendy look and old school, you have so many different types to it. But if you look at its revenue growth, it added 10 million new active users in 2020 on its e-commerce business, which is huge. Uh, compared to a year ago and they have repeat order volume meaning people who bought their furniture are buying it again at 72 percent that's a huge customer retention so you're adding 10 million people and 72 percent of those people are reordering that means you're building a loyal fan base so i have my neighbors and she keeps on ordering Wayfair and people, whenever she doesn't like the furniture or wants to change it, she just puts it on the Facebook community group and people buy it instantly. So this is a very, very uh, high e-commerce growth business and I think it's gonna keep running in future because it's not really selling on Amazon and doesn't show like it needs Amazon to do well. Similar to Nike, when Nike pulled its product line from Amazon, it still exploded and it's doing well. So Wayfair is one of those special companies that doesn't need like those big e-commerce um, websites to make sales. It's just doing it on its own. So I think this stock could be huge in the next couple of years. So let's go ahead and take a look at the fundamentals and the balance sheet of this company. As you can see, it's up 31% year to date right there. But however, it has a negative $2.73 
earning per share, and it has a high 4P of 120. That's pretty expensive, pretty expensive, but that's what is to be expected. Now the balance sheet. If we look at the quarter view of this is Q3 2020, so this is before the Q4, which will be announced in a couple of days, and Q4 are usually the best time for companies because that's the holiday sales, November, uh, was it October, November, December? So this is before then. So I'm expecting a huge Q4 number. But the but according to the Q3, the total current asset is three million, and their total uh, current liability is two point two. So their total current asset is way more than debt, which is really good. However, the bad thing to look at is their ne uh, total of negative equity is going up year over uh, quarter over quarter. So that's something that you guys have to be aware of. This is a pretty expensive company, but I think it has a good huge uh, potential and has a huge upside. Moving on to stock number two, and this one I am so bullish on this company. I absolutely love everything about this company, and I'm going to just keep buying into this company whenever there's a dip because I am convinced this is one of the best growth companies for me to invest in. It's up to you guys to you uh, decide what to do with your money and your investment. But this company is called CrowdStrike Holdings. It is a cloud-based cybersecurity company and their mission statement is simple. We stop breaches. That's it. That's their whole goal is just to stop breaches. And the way they get their revenue is brilliant. It's a subscription-based revenue where you have to subscribe to them and they'll keep protecting you and protecting you. It's not a one-time buy thing, so that's phenomenal for investors. So let's go ahead and just show you how they've been doing. So at the bottom, it was only $33 back in you know the worst uh, market downturn for the pandemic. And now it's up over, over, 250%. Look at the past five years. It came out in 2011. Look at that straight line up of how well this company is doing. Look at their earnings. They crushed every single earnings for the past four quarters. They're gonna, they crushed it. Look at the estimates. It's phenomenal. Let me show you when I first talked about this company back in June. I talked about in June 2020. I bought it at $100. And I'm up over 116% and I decided to buy more. It's a little bit down since the market had a little correction, but I'm going to just keep buying more into this company. So let's go ahead and show you everything why I like this company so much. If you look at their website, it follows their mission statement. We stop so you can go. Basically protection platforms to build to stop breaches. If you look at the investor relationship page, we are on missions to protect our customer from breaches and you can see all the different products they offer, the product bundles they have, the endpoint security systems, the cloud security solution, ID protections, management service, threat intelligence, and platforms. Now let's look at their balance sheet. No debt, you see this? Absolutely no debt. This company has zero debt. And the current total assets, now this is Q3 of 2021. Uh, you can see it has um, $1.3 million in current assets. And then you have total assets of 1.7. And look at the liabilities. The liabilities is very low and no debt. It, this is phenomenal balance sheet. And it's also all recurrent revenue. Like as they continue to have different, their competitors, the cloud-based cybersecurity, let's say other companies get breaches. This is going to make people wanting to switch to CrowdStrike and the stock's going to explode. So far, I don't recall anything bad about breaches within CrowdStrike and it's been phenomenal. That is why I like this company and I see a huge long-term growth to just keep buying into this company for my uh, personal opinion. Moving on to our next stock, I think this one's sexy. It's called Fiven. Wait, no, not Fiven. Uh, it's 5.9. Fiven was a ticker symbol and it's a data call service. Wait, that's not sexy. I made a mistake. Maybe no stocks is sexy except Tesla. Anyways, you know how you, uh, when you need a support on a phone, you go on the phone, call the phone number, and it says, hello, thank you for calling, blah, 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 blah. You went, and primero uno, press this, and for espanol, press dos. Okay, press one. For data and billing, press one. For marketing, press two. For technical support, two. Okay, and then when it keeps saying, have you tried our online solutions? Customer service. Sorry, I did not hear you. Uh, please repeat. Did you want billing? So customer service. Okay, you want customer service. Let me connect you. Please hold. Due to large call value, it may take you five hours to get your hours to get your phone call. Why are you like this? Well, guess what? 
Five9 is actually a virtual cloud solution to all of that. Yes, they do have that, but they engage with the customers a lot more directly. You know, you can set appointments or reminders or actually communicate uh, customers through actually like text on a phone and it's actually with a live agent. You can do it through email. You can do it through other social media means like Twitter DMs or Facebook DMs. This allows you to do that and it takes away the need for having a mass huge call centers and it allows supervisors to kind of watch what all the tech support is doing and give suggestions to tech support live with the whole overview. So therefore you need less people in call centers sitting there answering the phone. You have someone from a different country with a large thick accent and their name is Wayne when it's not Wayne at all. And they have a picture of London trying to describe to you what London or America looks like. Now, if you look at the stock, it has been running up for the past five years, past one year has been up and the past three months has been pretty good. Look at all the earnings right here. They beat on every single earnings for the past four quarters. Doesn't mean they're always guaranteed to beat the next earning, but it's been pretty good. If you look at when I first bought this, I bought this back in June, just like how I talked about CrowdStrike. I am up over 83, 85% on the stock. So it's been pretty good as well. Uh, you can see the look at the balance sheet. The balance sheet is fantastic. Uh, their total debt is their coverage can be covered by their total assets. The current total assets is good. So overall, healthy balance sheet, healthy company, good for long run in my opinion. Stock number four, and that is Twilio. Now I've been talking about the stock back in middle 2020 at all times highs, and it was too rich for my taste, so I never got into it, and it still kept going up and up and up. And I was like, you know what? This stock is gonna keep going up uh, and there's no good entry point. So I've recently bought into it. So Twilio is a communication-based company allow businesses to talk to their customers or clients a lot more easily. For example, let's say Uber. You know how Uber driver, uh, when they meet a location, they can click I'm here and then it texts the passenger saying I'm here. And you guys can text or call each other and you're not actually giving each other's real phone number or any identification to each other. It's all secured. Uh, using that API that they offer to their customers. This is used through Lyft, this is used through Turo, several other businesses have been using it, and the US government has been using it as well as a way to talk to uh, patients to get the vaccines and coordinate that all securely. So it makes it that easy for communication of two different parties. And let's go ahead and take a look at their actual YouTube channel explaining what it is. Mission is simple, Twilio. Twilio is the cloud communications platform that more than 50,000 companies and over 2 million developers use as their platform for customer engagement. So using simple API and lines of code, they can connect businesses to the customer easy in several different ways through phone call, messaging, emails, and they only have to pay for what they use. So it can be pretty cheap to try it out. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this company on Robinhood. Their earnings, they beat every single earnings for the past four quarters. So they just keep beating analysts expectation and this company has been on a huge rise i i, I was thinking buy this around uh, below a hundred dollars and i was like ah it's too expensive <laughs> now it's almost at four hundred dollars made a big mistake there so i didn't make the same mistake now there's no good entry period so i just bought this back in december 18 2020 and i got in around 363 dollars a share i'm up seven percent on my positions so let's go ahead and take a deeper look so looking at their balance sheet statements, you can see in Q3 2020, their total current assets, 3.5 million, total assets, six. Look at their liabilities. Look at how low their total current liabilities and their total debt is. It is so low. This company is raking in a lot of money. So I think more and more as time goes on, Twilio is just gonna keep raking in money because it makes it easier for everyone to communicate safely and effectively and transparently for people and the government's using it to roll out the vaccines. I mean, the government could use this for several other ways to communicate to uh, the people. So I like Twilio and I think it's gonna just keep going all time highs. So I, uh, I suggest uh, looking into this. Moving on to our fifth and final company, and then this is a strong company that I absolutely love, and it's a good EV play, regardless of how the economy is doing, this company is always gonna do well, and it is Albert Marley. It is a mining company that has a lot of the necessary materials 
that EV battery needs and other things uh, that's not EV related needs as well. And guess what? It's a dividend aristocrat has been growing their dividend and paying consistently for over 26 years. I mean, let's take a look at this. So Albert Marley, you can see, look, up over 260% for the past five years. This past year is up over 100%, has an awesome dividend yield. Look, beat all of their earnings or in line, uh, that Q4 uh, 19, it's in line. I talked about this company uh, back in, let's see, July. July 2020, I bought in at $88 a share, and I said, this is a good company you guys should look into. Up over 95%, and you can see I've just been buying and buying more of this company since I just love the dividends and the growth of this company. So if we look at it, it has a 3.5 earnings per share, a nice uh Earnings of 50, it's kind of high, but I still, it's better than most other companies. They're trying to get to four to 43, and the PG is a little bit high, three, uh, 3.28, but it's it's still good in my opinion, and it's 8%. Now, we don't even have to look at the dividends since they've been paying it for over 26 years consistently. Look at that growth. Uh, they're growing their dividends consistently. Uh, let's look at the statements and their balance sheet right here, what they got here. Looking at this balance sheet, it's pretty healthy. It's a pretty good balance sheet right here. Their total assets, it's 10 mil. Their total current liabilities is only 1.6. So you have the total current asset double their total current liabilities. And same thing of everything, of their total liabilities six, where the total current assets 10. So it's over, oh, I think it's one and a half times. So overall, this company is a phenomenal company. And on top of that, you get dividends. Only bad thing I don't like is you can't do dividend reinvestment. There's no drip effect. So that's the only downside. Wish you could re, uh, reinvest. And the thing is, it's based in a different country. So it gives you exposure outside just only U.S. stocks. So if the U.S. economy is not doing well, at least this company is still doing well since it's not related to the U.S. And they have all these basic materials. I mean, look at all the things that they do uh, that they manufacture, marketing chemicals, uh, refining, utilities, packaging, construction, transportations, pharmaceuticals, they mine lithium, lithium and bromine, hydroxide, all these other stuff that you could use. So I do definitely like this company. All right, guys, so those were five stocks that I like to buy in February of 2021. Keep in mind, do your own research. And I think these companies are good for the long term as well. So I might just keep buying more into it. Let me know in the comments section if you agree or if there are other growth companies you guys like besides those speculative EV plays. I'm, I'm actually interested in different things than just EVs. I, I like to be very diverse and be knowledgeable about what's going on in the world, what's hot and what it could change the future. Uh, so I appreciate it. If you guys want to see my whole $500,000 portfolio, make sure you guys join the membership. Feel free to join M1 Finance. They're giving you $30 if you use my referral uh, link below and Webull and all that good stuff. All right, guys. See you next time. Bye.